welcome to Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Mark Mustio of the 44th District in Allegheny County. My guest for today's program is Christina Casotis, CEO of the Allegheny County Airport Authority. Welcome, Christina. Thank you for having I'm, me. I'm really excited to have you here. Um, <laughs> my legislative district encompasses all the communities in Allegheny County around the airport. And I can tell you when I first got elected, it was a couple years after 9-11 mm -hmm. and, and U.S. Air was going through a bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. And when the airport gets a cold, you know, my yes. area gets pneumonia. Yes. Um, but so many great things have happened uh, since then and, and particularly uh, since you've come on board in the last couple of years. So I just wanted to kind of let the constituency know a little bit about your background and, sure. and, and what's happening at the airport, because not everybody does make it over there, but it has such an impact on the community. Well, first of all, thank you for your partnership. It's been wonderful working with you and, and having your support and having you understand what's important to us at the airport, because to your point, we want to stop being a drag on the region and we want to start being an enabler and a facilitator. So. I'll start with my background. Do we want to do that? Sure. sure. Do. Okay. <laughs> People want to know about you. Sure. Sure. So I, I am a New Englander. I'm new to Pittsburgh. We've been here, my family and I have been here for just over two years. I arrived in January of 2015. Prior to that, I was leading a consultancy practice that focused on airports worldwide. So I was based in Boston, but had a team in New York and Beijing and London and worked with airports around the world in areas of competitiveness. So when the opportunity came to come to Pittsburgh, I was very excited to put all of this into practice. And uh, we've had tremendous success. So uh, that's what we're hoping to continue and plan to continue. Well, and it's, you've been kind enough to invite me to several of the oh, new announcements right. at the airport. Um, and, and kind of talk about that process. Sure. How do you go about getting new flights? Because we've gone from, what, over five or 600 a day to you know, where we are now. About and, 180, and, yeah. And, and you're really growing it. Right. So when I got here in January of 2015, there were 37 destinations served nonstop. And the real question that the board and men members of the community had is, is this what we're left with or is there more we can do? And my feeling was that it's a very underserved community, that there's a lot of opportunity, and we've seen that. So now we're at 68 destinations nonstop, uh, which is a big deal. We're going back to Europe this summer with more service. Delta had been in with the Paris service, and now we will see Frankfurt on Condor. We will see Iceland and then into Europe uh, with WOW Air. And uh, our regionals flights have really developed nicely, right? So a lot of Pennsylvania markets are now available, as well as markets like Cincinnati and Indianapolis, Milwaukee, Hartford, Albany, Richmond. So we are building, and the idea is that I tell people the opposite of a hub is not, not a hub. The opposite of a hub is an origin and destination market, and that's Boston, that's Tampa, that's San Diego, places where people begin or end their trips as opposed to just connect through. So we can be a really good origin and destination mm -hmm. airport, and that's what we're doing is we're building for what do people into and out of Pittsburgh want for service, and how do we make sure that we're keeping up with the growth in the community to enable more and more growth. There's two questions I want to ask from sure. a business standpoint. Um, it used to be that companies were cut to come to Pittsburgh because the airport could get their yeah. people out to a lot of different sites. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of cities now, since the airline industry has changed, that mm -hmm. are similar to Pittsburgh. Yes. So from that standpoint, I'm not as concerned. But what do you hear from the business community as far as where things are going or where they'd like to be? And then let's eventually transition into... Uh, shale gas and, and all the opportunities that are there. Well, first of all, you're right. Pittsburgh was one of several markets and very much in the heartland of the U.S. that lost their hubs. So Cincinnati, Cleveland, Raleigh, Memphis, Nashville, Milwaukee, Pittsburgh. We were not the only ones. I will say that I think we're doing really well in terms of recovery ahead of, of other markets. Um, I'm sorry, what was the second part of that question? The, the, the business oh, community. Oh, what do I hear from them? Everything. <laughs> they are very, very interested in making sure that they can get places nonstop. The biggest pain point for them and us, as a result of it being for them, is the West Coast. We have two flights to L.A. and one to San Francisco. Um, and that San Francisco flight is one a day, only 10 months out of the year. It's a very, very robust market between Pittsburgh and San Francisco because of the tech industry, because in between Pittsburgh and LA because of the film industry and business in general. So we are working very hard to get those flights. The issue is that airlines can make more money filling that plane 
five times a day than just once a day, right? Okay. It, it's a utilization issue. So we're working hard on that. We've been working on it since I got here, and that's what the business community is saying is we need more West Coast service, and we need more service. Uh, Year-round Europe was important, and we continue to work on, on making sure we have the right mix of carriers in all the markets. And then we have seen, as the airport has benefited mm -hmm. with the shale, Yes. Shell gas lease. Yeah. Um, maybe That's we can, a big deal. Maybe you can talk a little bit about that too, but also how is that going to help flights um, in the community? Sure. So, so the the announcement by Royal Dutch Shell was very big news. We we were very happy to hear it, and we pushed that out to all of the airlines that we're targeting to say, look how the region is growing, look how the economy has diversified. So you have the Eds and the Meds. You have Shell. You have financial services. You have. Um, you have a lot in the high-tech industry. That's a very diverse economy, right, as opposed to the old days where it was largely based on steel and manufacturing. So, okay, look, further proof that the economy is diversifying, that's number one. Number two, that means more traffic back and forth to Europe because Royal Dutch Shell is based in Amsterdam. It means more development around the airport in your district and, and in, on our property, and that development is likely to generate air travel. So we look at that announcement as a very big impact, having a very big impact, not only on the airport directly in terms of companies that may follow, that may locate in your district or on our property, but that may want to use the airport for cargo and or passenger. And so we're very focused on making sure that we're understanding who those companies may be and when they'd want to relocate or locate near the cracker. You've mentioned development on the airport mm. property. How many acres does the airport itself control? So we sit on 8,800 acres at Pittsburgh. And of that, 3,800 are available for development. And we're working, we have that, those sites identified and zoned. And we're just at the beginning of a study to make sure that with the cracker plant announcement, with the additive manufacturing announcement by GE, and all of, all of what, what's going on in the region, are we targeting the right companies? Do we want to make sure, or how do we make sure that we're, we're, we're using the development opportunities for the right development, as opposed to just the first people who come along? And, and that's, I think, a, a different way of looking at it, so that we can get the highest and best use out of the land, and the economy can, can benefit the most appropriately. Airlines decide to come. Why? Um, they, you hear about in the paper yeah. all the time landing fees no. and things like that. No. What, what are the real, real reasons? The market. They, like, okay. As I say to, um, as I say to folks who have this question, and a lot of people in this market, I think we're led to believe that because the costs were too high, the airlines weren't coming back in. That's that's actually not true. Our costs are pretty much a little left of center, but they're very much in line with other airports. We've been lowering them, but in, in any case, air, airlines serve markets. They don't serve airports. They don't care that we have four runways. They don't care that we have 75 gates. They don't care that it's a beautiful facility. They care about the market. Who wants to go into and out of Pittsburgh? And they're balancing that with everybody else who wants that asset, that one airplane, to serve them. So our job is to keep moving up on the list, to keep showing why we're relevant to their network, why we make sense, why we're succeeding and where the opportunities are for them as a business to do well. And, and that's how we do it. Well, that really translates then into we better be helping doing the job in Harrisburg to make sure it's attractive for business well, to come here. Yes, and, and uh, that's a very big help for us. It matters a lot what happens in Harrisburg, which is why I'm here, is to, is to reiterate how important the state is as a partner and, how, and, the, and the role that each of you play in supporting us makes a big difference, no question. We talk about Greater Pitt in my district all the time. I mentioned to you before we got on the air, there is another airport <laughs> that you oversee as That's well. That's true. Yeah, the County Airport, which is a fantastic Art Deco building, right, in West Mifflin, and a wonderful place for the community to be able to see aviation up close and personal. So there's a flight school out there. Uh, there are two fixed-based operators that handle a lot of private aircraft, very beautiful aircraft. Uh, there's a lot of activity going on, but we want to make sure that it's, it's doing everything it can as well. So we're about to start a master plan out there. We're hoping to be able to offer facilities for the community, like a restaurant at the airport and other things that really take advantage of the asset that's in the community. 
that's exciting too. Yeah, it is. It is. It's it's a it's a really it's a really fun place to be. I see when I go out there. Sometimes I see parents standing, you know, against the fence, and the kids are watching the planes take off. And I think that you know we have a real interest and a, I think a responsibility to attract more and more people into the aviation field. And uh, and that airport lets kids see it right up front and gets them excited. You've been great partners with the neighborhood neighbors yeah. townships. Thank you. Um, and I. I hope that they have been uh, the same. I know that the airport is, is vitally important to the residents, not only for their own personal travel, but for, for jobs. Yeah, and, and, and the relationship we have the, with the communities is incredibly important. I just m met with folks from Moon recently, as a matter of fact, and I think we're all on the same page in terms of wanting the same things. Because to your point earlier, right, when the airport gets a cold, your, your community suffers pneumonia. Our job is to, we are really working hard to turn that whole dynamic around so that as we do well, you do, you do as well, if not better, because of the, of the spinoff and, um, and the jobs that are created and the opportunities for people to move into the area. So we do, we really appreciate the relationship we have with the communities surrounding both airports. This position has enabled me to get kind of back behind the scenes tour of the airport. And yeah. One day I was over there and I, they said, oh, this is where the train was going to come. Under, there was an uh, underground situation. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. a train, really? Um, but then I was able to find out that um, we actually have a dog wash or a, a, a place for pets. Yes, right? to, to relieve themselves. I we have a other, pet relief area. Yeah. <laughs> there was a fire hydrant there. Yes. Come on. Yes, and we clean it often. I just want everybody to know. But, you know, we have a very, because of that train, you can't, if you've got a pet at the airport, you can't just walk outside with it, right? So oh, that's true. Right. So for people who have um, therapy dogs or uh, pets that they're bringing on airplanes, we have to, we, those poor things, we have to make sure that they have some place to take care of themselves before they get on a long flight or just after they've come off of one. So that's been very successful, actually. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw it, I, I had thought about it at one point, taking a picture and posting it in my <laughs> newsletter and say, do you know we're in Pennsylvania? Yeah. This is. Uh, it, was, it was really a shocker. And then there's a nice military lounge and yes, then also yes. the Tuskegee Airmen yes. Memorial there, um, which brings me to a question. Sure. Uh, uh, unless you're buying a ticket, mm -hmm. it used to be very difficult to get out to see that. Is that still the case, that there's no way you're, to get through the... You're going to see some changes with that. If, if I'd be happy to tell you as soon as I can. But okay. we have been working really hard with the TSA. As you know, once a year uh, around the holidays, we open up the checkpoint to non-ticketed individuals, right? And run their names against a no-fly list that anybody would be run against if they were flying on an airplane, and then give them a pass to go through and shop. So. We may have an opportunity to expand that, and, and uh, I promise uh, you'll be one of the first to know. It's a beautiful, um, you did a beautiful remodel job. No, oh, well, thank you. We're, we've got more coming. Side. We've got more coming. We're going to be replacing carpeting. That carpeting is 25 years old. Uh, you're going to see some painting. It's, it's going to continue to be refreshed. Just really nice lounge areas. It's, it's, oh, I, I would recommend buying a ticket and going somewhere <laughs> just to see what's out there. <laughs> Well, hopefully you won't have to, but uh, yeah, we're, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And it's, it's, great, it's great to have your support and to be able to talk about it here. Let's take a quick break. Uh, legislative report will return in a moment. Did you know that Violet Oakley was the first female artist to receive a large commission for artwork done in a United States Capitol building? In 1902, Joseph Houston, designer and architect for the 3rd Harrisburg Capitol building, commissioned Violet Oakley to paint murals for the governor's reception room. He believed that Oakley's contribution would add interest to the building and act as an encouragement of women of the state. Prior to beginning her work for the Capitol, Oakley set out to England to conduct research for her murals. Upon return, she decided to center her artwork on William Penn and the founding of Pennsylvania. Oakley made sure that Penn's ideals of justice and peace could be seen throughout her work. In 1906, she completed 13 murals titled The Founding of the State of Liberty Spiritual and was placed in sequential order around the governor's reception room. These murals were some of the first to be installed in the Capitol. When Edwin Austin Abbey, another artist for the Capitol, died in 1911, Oakley was offered another opportunity to create murals for the unfinished Senate and Supreme Court chambers. Her work on the Senate murals, including International Understanding, was completed by 1919. 
Oakley then completed the Supreme Court murals, including the Divine Law, by 1927. Oakley is said to be the principal artist for the Capitol, with a total of 43 murals on display. She remains one of the greatest muralists in the United States. Now you know. Did you know that Act 16 of 1999 honors one of the greatest leaders in the Pennsylvania House of Representatives? The Matthew J. Ryan Legislative Office Building, once known as the Capitol Annex, is located next to the main Capitol building and honors the late Speaker of the House, Matthew J. Ryan. Those who visit this building will observe the magnificent architectural designs providing eloquence and grandeur to the building. Known as one of the greatest members in the history of the Pennsylvania State House, Matthew Ryan started his career in the legislature in 1963 and was elected Speaker in 1981. His charisma and knowledge will forever be reflected in the building now named after this great legislative leader. Now you know. Welcome back to the program. We've been discussing the airport with Christina Cassiotis, CEO of the Allegheny County Airport Authority. Joining the conversation is Representative Jim Christiana from Beaver County. Welcome, Jim. Hi, hey Mark. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Uh, we talked a little bit with Christina about the importance to the airport to my legislative district, but um, I have a, sus a suspicion that it's as important to yours. Well, the Pittsburgh region has been blessed over the last few decades to uh, cease growth in downtown Pittsburgh, and, and I heard Christine talking about the diversified economy in, in Pittsburgh, um, South Point, Cranberry, um, but Beaver had been uh, um, not so lucky over the years, and, and without a doubt, I think getting folks to Beaver County uh, requires a robust airport corridor. Um, being that link uh, from Pittsburgh and, and, and Washington County um, to the airport uh, to Beaver County. Um, so I've always been um, a huge supporter of uh, uh, bringing the airport back uh, to uh, its, its, its prominent days. Um, and however we can do that as a region, um, I think uh, it, it bodes well for the entire region, especially for Beaver County. One of the legislative initiatives that we're going to be looking at is the continua continuation of gaming funds um, that were in the original slots legislation to help pay off or help contribute to paying off the debt at the at the airport. And Christina, I'm sure that's <laughs> something that's um, you've been actively thinking yeah. about as that starts to sunset. Yes, it, it mostly because as that sun sets, uh, we are also facing a 25-year-old facility with end-of-life issues in some of the systems. So we are looking at how do we modernize and right-size that airport to really be representative of the region's airport as opposed to an airport for U.S. Airways, right? So, so we think that there's an opportunity to do that, uh, to lower the costs to the airlines overall. And while those costs are not keeping them out. The lower they are, the more that they look at us as a good partner and a competitive partner, and, uh, and it's, it's an easier conversation to talk about growth. Well, it seems to me that the board and the county executive are, are, have been pushing us uh, significantly <laughs> lately to make sure that that happens. So I suspect as we move forward towards the end of this budget cycle that 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 will be taken care of. I hope so, because it's important for our region. Um, we also talked to Christina earlier about the cracker plant and shell gas. Congratulations. Yeah. Well, thank yeah. you. That pretty much has your seal of approval and yeah. stamp on it, buddy. You got it done. It, it, well, well, thank you. And um, I also uh, want to point out that the natural gas industry is obviously contributing jobs, and mm -hmm. government's always trying to look at uh, a way to um, maximize its resources by uh, any way possible. And I have to tell you that if uh, instead of just levying, you know, a massive sa severance tax on a company um, or an industry, why don't we look at uh, um, doing exactly what they did at the airport, which was to, and I have to give the leadership there and the county executive uh, um, a lot of credit because they looked at how can we embrace the natural gas industry and make revenue for the airport and for the taxpayers so not everything has to be thrown on them. That lease of the airport I thought was a um, uh, uh, just a, a tremendous uh, decision because mm -hmm. uh, it's going to bring in resources while it's uh, embracing um, energy production. I think without that, I'm, I, I, I'm being serious, without that connection and that fuel source going to the cracker plant or being a feedstock for a cracker plant, 
uh, I don't know if the cracker plant would have ever actually came to Beaver County because one of the biggest concerns we heard from Shell was having enough ethane to power that plant for 20 years. And uh, having uh, such a huge production facility uh, at the airport, uh, without a doubt, I think had a, played a role in, in securing the feedstock to make that plant a reality. Uh, I think we need more examples of government coming together with business and being a partner rather than just punitive public policy. And I think Christina was right, you know, spot on when she said um, the business climate and the growth and the opportunity is what's going to bring the airport back to its prominent days. It's not, she can't work magic, but you've tried. Whether it's the casino, whether it's the, the, the natural gas production on, on the airport property, um, I, thought, I think they've done a great job of reducing their, their debt, their costs, uh, to make them more competitive. But it does rely on the decisions here in Harrisburg to ensure we have a competitive business climate. Um, the 50 states are going to be in robust competition mm -hmm. against one another for economic development opportunities. Uh, we got to make sure that we don't uh, pass policy up here that ends up losing jobs, losing industry, and forcing it somewhere else. And the airport and a lot of other um, government facilities and operations and uh, assets are going to be in trouble if we, we get it wrong here. You brought up a good point with the cracker plant. That's such a visible project. And one of the discussions we had early on with Consul was because it's so visible, you could really establish a benchmark on how this could be done. Mm -hmm. As legislators, I think maybe I had one other well in my district, but some of our members have had them all over. And we get a lot of this press mm -hmm. and some negative mm -hmm. on it. We didn't, I didn't see any of that. We saw some initial public mm -hmm. reaction of concern mm -hmm. and maybe emotion. But I'm not sure that once things started over there that it didn't run smoothly and the way they communicated and, and the way you made them communicate um, was, was tremendous. Well, they've been fantastic partners. And I think that, that to your point about the, the leading uh, thought that went into bringing, allowing this to happen, this is only the third airport in the country that allows this, right? There's Dallas, Fort Worth, there's Denver International, and there's Pittsburgh International. So that right there says that we're thinking differently, right? And we're thinking about how to maximize all the resources that are available to us. And to your point, Consol has been a fantastic partner to us and to the community because that's what they do. They go way above and beyond in making sure that they're educating, that they're explaining, and that they are meeting the needs and concern, answering the concerns of constituents who have them. We have not heard of any um, instances where things were not resolved. I, I'm not saying that people don't have things that they keep asking questions about, but Consol is right there to, to meet their needs and to, and to take care of that. And that's been important to us. Could you remind me on what the financial impact was? So there was a $50 million bonus payment that was made in order to allow for the drilling and then 19% of the royalties wow. uh, come to the airport authority. And that allows us to take care of a backlog in capital projects. That allows us to take care of uh, contributing towards really the, the modernization of the facility, which is, is very badly needed. And I think it's important to, to point out that 19% of uh, royalty means 19% of the sale price. And, and the sale price in Pennsylvania is completely suppressed right now. I think that's where, if Harrisburg wants to help make us energy, you know, have uh, energy security in this country, if we want to put people back to work, if we want to manufacture things again in Pennsylvania, it's by making sure that we have a fuel source that is available and can get to the end user. Right now, we have a tremendous amount of supply and no demand, and so our price is suppressed. But uh, there is a lot of opportunity. Obviously, a uh, pipeline and getting this gas to market will help ra raise that price uh, slightly, so the airport makes more, our royalty owners and our landowners will make more. Um, but the good news is once you use that, it's coming with new economic opportunities and there's jobs. Rather than just shipping that gas somewhere else, um, we'd be miss, you know, uh, missing a huge opportunity if we don't find those users here in Pennsylvania. And then the other part of it is, that, you know, there are markets in the Northeast that, you know, are continually and have been importing natural gas. Boston has a LNG facility that uh, the U.S. government has to, to protect. Um, because they're importing natural gas, yet we're sitting on a, um, the Saudi Arabia of natural gas here in, in Pennsylvania, but we don't have the pipeline because uh, government gets in the way. 
we have a couple minutes. Um, the cracker plant itself is a very expensive project, a lot of capital investment. It's thousands of construction jobs. Those will go away. Four or five, six hundred jobs to operate the plant. That's not why we really wanted the cracker plant here. We wanted the cracker plant for other development. Talk a little bit about that because those are the people that are going to move to the area and are be flying out of the airport. <laughs> Absolutely. So the greatest, the reason that a cracker plant is a game changer for a, re, a, re, for a region is um, obviously you have the production jobs to get the gas to the plant. Um, and, and the 7,000 construction jobs are temporary. But when Shell is up and running, they're making a product. But that's not a final product. That product makes mm -hmm. hundreds and thousands of other products not at the Shell facility, they have to go somewhere else. That's the golden ticket for our region. That's the 100,000 jobs in a region that can be created uh, from this cracker plant. We've got to make sure that they're here and they're not in Ohio and they're not in West Virginia um, because they want this opportunity as well. Uh, so we still have plenty of work to do. And we're hearing stories that there might be room for more cracker plants based on that Saudi Arabia. Yeah, there's <clears throat> enough, for, uh, enough ethane uh, for three to four cracker plants. They, you know, the studies have shown, uh, but uh, we do have uh, the anchor tenant. Um, this is the largest capital investment, not just in Beaver County's history, but the entire Pittsburgh region's history. Um, and it, we know that it only is the, it's the beginning because there are billions of dollars of investment that have to come afterwards. Let's make sure we secure it here. And if people haven't taken the drive out of what I used to call the Beaver Valley Expressway before it was 376, <laughs> go down to Beaver and turn around and come back, it's, it's an incredible construction site. Just be careful because as you're driving, it can take your attention uh, <laughs> away from so the road massive. because it is so massive and uh, um, it really is uh, extremely exciting too. Well, this really plays right into, Christina talked earlier about the 3,000 or so acres mm -hmm. that they have for development that they're you know, working on a master plan for. Um, that's why we make decisions that we do in Harrisburg is smart from an environmental standpoint okay. when you have companies like Consol that do mm -hmm. it right and we need to make sure it's done right. But at the same time, we want to make sure the jobs are here in Pennsylvania right. um, and then that we're not reliant on one or two industries, but mm -hmm. we have diversified and, and you spoke to that early, mm -hmm. um, that that's what we're doing. Yeah, and I think the whole region, you know, when I, I have to be very careful when I talk about Pittsburgh, I really do mean the Western Pennsylvania region, but it's from an airline perspective that, you know, they know, sure. they know Pittsburgh. They don't necessarily know the Allegheny County Airport Authority. So we talk about Pittsburgh. But for us, that really encompasses the whole Western Pennsylvania region. And I think that the diversification that's happened there in the economy, that natural gas has been a, a, a very big part of, high tech has been as well, that's what we're trying to replicate at the airport, right? Instead of being dependent on one airline, we are looking to have a diversity of carriers to meet the needs of, of all of the flying public, business, leisure, uh, et cetera. So, so that's, we're, we're actually looking to replicate the success that, that you all have enabled. Well, I want to thank both of you for spending time with me today. We're going to have to do this on an annual basis because <laughs> sure. you tease us with some yeah, things that might be coming. coming. Yeah, so we've got more coming. Um, we'll have you back on the air, and, and, and maybe we can get you to announce that then. Thank you. Real pleasure to be here. Nice Likewise. to see you. Thank you. That's all the time we have for today's program. If you need assistance with any state government matter, feel free to contact me at my local office or through my website. Thanks for watching, and please join me next time for Legislative Report.